This is AFL.com.au. The fixture for 2013, the Toyota AFL Premiership season, is out and there is a lot to talk about here to do that. The two men who pieced it all together, the AFL's General Manager of Broadcasting, Scheduling and Legal Affairs, Simon Lethling, and the Chief Operating Officer, Gillan McLaughlin. Welcome to you both. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, Matt. This Thanks. has been a, a lot of work, hasn't it, the, uh, the past uh, months in the planning? Yeah, well, Lethus lives with a computer in his room and um, sort of outsourced his wife for two months. He's done an amazing job. It's an extraordinary amount of work that Simon does and, and, and runs it and with a team of um, Emma and Thea and, and his broadcasting team, and I'm very proud of the work they've done. All right, let's get straight into it then and take a look at round one. Opening round, and it is split in two. It begins on Friday, March 22, with Adelaide and Essendon at Amy Stadium, and then the Western Derby, Fremantle and West Coast at Patterson's Stadium on Saturday, March 23. Then over the page, we can take a look and show you that Carlton and Richmond, that traditional Thursday night match, kicks off the second week, and then no good Friday football. This is, of course, the Easter weekend, we then get into a, a bunch of important matches, concluding with Hawthorne and Geelong on Monday, the 1st of April. Uh, Gil, why is the season starting in this way? Um, I think we made it pretty clear during the year that we were keen to start on that weekend, the 22nd of March, so we could play working backwards from the last weekend in September. We'll play um, our 22-week season over 24 weeks to give all our players two weeks rest. We weren't able to do that because of the unavailability of particularly the MCG, but also the Gabba and, and, and other venues. So ultimately, um, as we look then, we, we still kick off that weekend so we can get a Friday night and a Saturday night over two weeks. So we have one week with, with extra prime time slots and we can push and promote those games in the first week. Um, but I think if we had the venues available, we'd play all of the games that first weekend. But it is what it is and, and, and it gives us a, a vehicle to promote the games in a number of distinct slots. Where are you on that right now in terms of negotiating with cricket, particularly here in Victoria, in terms of trying to, to, to get this? And how much of a priority is it to try and get this sorted out? It's a huge priority for us. Uh, we um, have had an ongoing dialogue with our players and sort of priority one, two and three for them is to be getting a couple of breaks during the year. We worked hard at trying to make that happen. We've spoken a number of times with cricket and spoken with the state government and ultimately we want to continue to hopefully have a, a productive dialogue to try and solve this problem. All right, and still no good Friday football. The, the Commission's pretty much against that, aren't they? I think for the foreseeable future we'll leave it as is. So, um, but if you look at that through that work, first week, um, great to be opening the season in Adelaide, big Friday night game, the Derby in Perth, um, a blockbuster Easter Thursday, um, uh, a really interesting game, the GWS um, Sydney game on uh, Easter Saturday in the twilight slot um, on the back of the show and a cracking game on Sunday, uh, Geelong Hawthorne. So there's some big games in there. Something that is really interesting <coughs> about the fixture this coming season is school night footy. There's more matches on Monday nights and Thursday nights. Explain that for us, Simon. Yeah, probably just one more game than, I guess, um, 2012. Um, we've got two Thursday night games, one in round one, obviously, uh, then one in round 14 off the back of the, the buy. So West Coast versus Islam, which would be a big game in Western Australia. Um, and two Monday night games. So we had one Monday night game in 2012, the, I guess, traditional game now of St Kilda v Carlton on that post-Mother's Day Monday, which we're continuing with at Etihad. Um, and the second one is, I guess, celebrating uh, a public holiday in Western Australia on uh, WA Day, which is the old Foundation Day, uh, West Coast versus Richmond, which is a different feel, a you know, public holiday game in Perth, which I think they'll embrace. Friday nights is an interesting topic as well, Gillen. Over the journey, we've seen um, a lot of debate about who should get the right to play on the Friday night stage. Has there been a philosophical shift, perhaps, in the past couple of years that you really do have to earn the right to play on Friday night? Yeah, I think so. I mean, whether it's a philosophical shift or an evolution, maybe they're the same thing. Um, Friday night, I mean, last year, I think it averaged about 1.3 million people. It's our uh, the biggest slot in our fixture um, and um, you know I think there are a number of uh, clubs who, who you know own a number of supporters who don't want to watch teams being beaten by 15 goals. I think clubs understand that they have to be at a certain level of competitiveness as they look forward to get that slot now and um, last year four teams didn't get a game on Friday night, this year it's five. Um, so I think there's an evolution and maybe it's reflective of a moment in time when we've got you know, the expansion phase going on and there's probably more teams at the moment who are probably not going to win more than five or six games, seven games or whatever it is. So we've made the decision to really make Friday night uh, as strong as possible. 
Uh, and I think we're very well supported by the clubs in that. They all know that. They support it. And frankly, I think a number of clubs, as they rebuild, you know, take um, a Melbourne or, or a club like that, they probably don't want to be playing Friday on the big stage until they're ready to play there. Simon, the other really interesting time slot is Sundays and, uh, and Twilight yeah. matches. Just want to talk about uh, the Sunday 3.15 bounce matches. Uh, obviously, they're on free-to-air TV in Victoria. They are a big deal. And clubs have been pushing for more Twilight footy, haven't they? It's been a, become a really popular time slot. Yeah, look, I think so. I think Saturday Twilight and Sunday Twilight are very popular now with our teams and our fans. And we saw a great Saturday Twilight final between uh, Hawthorne and Adelaide. We've certainly made... Um, I guess some some changes to our, our strategy to get some good games into those slots, or some certainly some better quality slots. Uh, but Sunday afternoon got some great games early on. I think um, yeah, um, Carlton and Collingwood playing round two, which is obviously a, a big game everyone's waiting for. Collingwood Hawthorne on Sunday afternoon, uh, and some great twilight games, Essendon St Kilda, uh, and a few others later in the year. So some real quality in those spots. We are going to witness history on Anzac Day with the first ever match in New Zealand. Gil, you've already announced this news, but this is obviously a huge deal. And the precursor to it will, of course, be the traditional clash at the MCG. So we've got an Anzac Day doubleheader. This is huge. Yeah, the time zone works perfectly for us. Um, this is a big deal uh, for us. It's a big deal for New Zealand and particularly Wellington. Um, we're really pleased to be able to get these games to work together. Um, and, um, you know, that flows seamlessly from one game to the other. I mean, I sort of think it's, it's a round as well, and uh, it's not... Um, <clears throat> it's worth mentioning that we're playing in Perth that Friday night. Mm -hmm. It'll be the Len Hall game, which they've promoted around Anzac Day for many years now. So um, it works very well, actually, I think, that, uh, that Anzac Day round. All right, let's turn our attention to examining the first month of footy. And it's really interesting, Simon, that there are some really big blockbuster matches involving Victorian teams in the first four weeks. Is that a deliberate strategy? Obviously, we're looking here at Carlton and Richmond, who opened the season, and then uh, we've also got a clash between Geelong and Hawthorne. There are some really big matches first up. Yeah, look, there is. I think we get most years, um, especially some of the Victorian games, the fans are keen to get to the MCG in Etihad and, and follow those games with big numbers. Um, we've talked about round one a bit already, I think, but uh, I guess the eagerly awaited Carlton Kine game is round two. With Mick Mulhouse, obviously, yeah. as coach of the Blues now, that will be, that will be a huge build-up, though. It'll be massive, and it's a Sunday afternoon. I think it's great for families, a you know, big time slot. Um, hopefully we get a full MCG house there. Um, we've got Collingwood Hawthorne, uh, I think, in round three. And round four is probably one of the best rounds of the year, in, in my opinion. Uh, a great Friday night game at the SCG, Swans and Geelong. Um, and some big Victorian games, Richmond Collingwood, um, the first time Goddard plays against Essendon, St Kilda Essendon on Saturday Twilight, uh, West Coast Carlton Saturday night. Um, so some big games in the first month, which is, which is great. Good way to kick off the season. All right, we're breaking down the 2013 AFL fixture here on AFL.com today. Let's take a look now at the teams that your club plays twice. We're going to take a little bit of time to look at this because it's fascinating and there is a, an interesting philosophy behind it. Uh, as you can see, uh, the Swans, being the Premiers, have some tough clashes, but of course they do get the opportunity to play their crosstown rivals, GWS, twice. Just looking through the list there, it's potentially a little bit difficult for Hawthorne. The teams in the red that you can see here, these are teams that finished in the top eight. The teams in the blue finished in the bottom ten. So that's the kind of colour coding that we've gone for here. North Melbourne, I mentioned, um, you can also see Geelong there with big matches against Sydney and Hawthorne. Over the page, and we can see here that the Gold Coast, for example, don't play any of the teams in the top eight twice. Uh, talk to us a bit about, as we continue to look at this, the philosophy, Simon. Look, I think it's an evolving philosophy. We've always had it that we've... Um, I guess had maximums and minimums based on where you finish um, in, the, in the latter of the year before. We have now five teams you played twice. Uh, in, 2010, in 2010 that was seven teams, so that landscape has changed a bit. Um, we've actively looked at, I guess, the matrix of who teams played twice to try and make, um, I guess, the sides that underperformed in 2012 uh, potentially play amongst that group themselves to even things up a bit. Um, equity is really important across this fixture and um, we have, a, I guess, um, some criteria around the top eight, how many times they play against bottom sides and the only side in the top eight to play um, against the Giants or Gold Coast twice is Sydney based on that, um, I guess, that cross-town rivalry. And so how is that offset? within the, the rest of their, their schedule? I'm not sure we, we actively try and offset it, but um, look, Sydney have got three top eight teams twice out of the five. 
Uh, they've got quite a rigorous travel um, regime going to Tasmania in round three, uh, in New Zealand in round five, uh, as well as a trip to Simmons Stadium. So they've got quite a tough travel draw. I guess that's one thing that we look at. Um, and they've got one of the highest six-day break draws. So um, I guess these things even out across the way. All right, well, one of the big questions I guess we're all asking is when will we see a grand final rematch? We're going to see two of them, Gil. Yeah, they are. So um, I think the opening game is Hawthorne Sydney in round seven at the MCG on a Friday night. So that'll be obviously a massive game and good to be back at the MCG. And then they're back um, <clears throat> at ANZ Stadium in round 23 in Sydney. So, um, you know, what an amazing grand final and, and um, you know, that game will be eagerly uh, awaited. Uh, the other thing to talk about with Sydney is that they're going to be um, unfurling their flag, premiership flag in round two at the SCG against Gold Coast. So, um, amazing story for Sydney. I'm tipping that Swans fans will be eager to get along to that and going on current form, they were probably in for a massive win that day as well. I'm a bit more bullish on Gold Coast than others, but we'll see. All right, let's turn our attention to teams on the road. The days of Victorian teams having an uneven number of uh, travelling fixtures is, no, is numbered. In fact, it's gone because uh, it's been spread around a, a bit more evenly this time around, hasn't it, Simon? Yeah, well, we've got, I guess we've got two teams now that are outside Victoria that weren't there two years ago. So um, every Victorian club now travels five times as a minimum um, and basically six being the cap. Um, and those that are above six are sides that now have home games outside of Victoria. So uh, you'll find that North, Melbourne, Bulldogs um, and Hawthorne have more than six because they, they have games in different states. Simon, for Tigers fans, I'm sure a lot of them cannot believe it, but they're going back to Cairns to play the Gold Coast Suns. They are. They're going to play their bogey side up there. They haven't uh, beaten the Gold Coasters yet. And it's round 16 next year on a, a Saturday twilight on Fox, um, which will be great. You know, a very highly uh, rated show, uh, sorry, game last year. The bogey slot to the twilight, isn't it? It is for the Tigers mm. especially. So. And how um, long has this agreement got to go with them playing games up here? Because if they lose this year, <laughs> there'll be an outcry from the Tigers faithful. Look, the Cairns game's really well attended, so we'll continue to play games there. I think the Richmond side of the deal is... Uh, it's last year, next year, so we'll sit down with Brendan Gale and the Tigers and see if they want to renew that. Yeah, it might be contingent on this year's result. Everyone gets a taste, just coming back to Melbourne for a second, everyone gets a taste of the MCG in 2013 as well. You've made a point of that? Yeah, look, every side plays at least one game there. Um, that's been you know, a request from clubs that their playing list and, and I guess their fans need the opportunity to play at the, I guess, the home of football for us and uh, we've delivered that this year. I guess the running joke in football is that every club wants to play Collingwood at home if possible. Uh, that's not possible, but every club does get to play Collingwood or Essendon at home. Can you briefly explain the idea behind that? Yeah, look, we've always had that rule as well. I mean, a number of rules in this fixture, but one of them is, I guess, for commercial sensitivities that we think it's only fair that you know, the two probably largest drawing Victorian clubs in Essendon and Collingwood, uh, every club gets at least one of those teams as a home game. So we've always delivered that uh, and no change for 2013. Gil, who is going to get the opportunity to flick the ceremonial switch down at Geelong? Uh, are you venturing down the highway? This is a big deal for the Cats. They're going to have this their new lights. Um, I'm sure it'll be uh, Colin Carter uh, and probably the Premier or the um, um, Victorian Sports Minister flicking the switch, but I'll be it there. It is a big deal. Um, Gold Coast, they've got a big year of unfurling and flicking and stuff. It'll be the opening uh, game in round 10 um, under lights mm. against the Gold Coast. So they'll unfurl Sydney's flag. They'll start up Geelong's lights. I don't know what else they'll be doing. So um, that's a, it's a big story down there to be playing... Um, uh, footy under lights at Geelong. It's a, a, the redevelopment's a, a story in itself, and, and and now moving to night games. And There's the Saints under big, lights down there. Against yeah, Geelong. and round 18 is going to be a big game. Yeah. St Kilda Geelong um, at Simmons is a under lights uh, Saturday night's a big a big story. And uh, I don't know how many years since St Kilda played down there, but it's uh, it has it has yeah. to be eight or nine or ten. It's certainly not not in my recent memory. So that'll be that'll be a big game down there. So Simmons Stadium now lit up and also Monica Oval. There's yep. some lights there too. <clears throat> yeah, that's a great story for us too. And it's a really strong Canberra fixed year this year. So yeah, I think it's round three we open up with the uh, first game in Canberra, GWS against St Kilda. And um, uh, that will be a twilight game. So using the lights for the first time. I think they've also got um, the Bulldogs up in Canberra as well. well. They've got a good strong fixture at Monica. 
All right, we're almost out of time. Just before we go, and I'm not sure if you guys can actually comment on this, but in the afl.com.au newsroom, we've been doing some work. This is the floating fixture round 23. Now, that's not the order that you've got them in the fixture book, but that's the order that we've put them in, in particular the bottom three matches. That's what we're speculating will be played out on the final Sunday of the season in terms of which teams will probably be out of contention for the top eight. When will you actually make the decision on that, Simon? Uh, look, historically we try and make it as early as we can. It depends on how tight the top eight is, I suppose. Look, this is designed you know, entirely to make sure that um, our first week of finals is as good as it can be based on day breaks for clubs and, and travelling clubs. So um, we'll make the call about four or five weeks out, but we've got great flexibility now. It's also the last game at Amy Stadium, so... Port Adelaide Carlton's a good game to have there and we've got some flexibility just to work out where those all end up. Port Adelaide Carlton will be the, the, both those teams will be closer or Port Adelaide will be closer to the eight than you think. All right, Gil's talking them up. Thank you to yeah. you both for joining us. Much Thanks, appreciated. Sam. Simon and Gil with us here. That is our first look at the fixture for the 2013 Toyota AFL Premiership season. Online right now here at afl.com.au. You can check out the full fixture. You can also take a closer look club by club to see who your team plays, when and where. Click the icon for your side and then you can also hear more from Simon about your team's individual fixture. And we've got lots of analysis too for you from our team of reporters. The countdown is already on. And we cannot wait for now. I'm Matt Thompson. Thank you so much for watching.